Welcome back to another video. This is going to be a response to one of my classmates from a discussion board that I had in my Ecosystem Science of the Pacific Northwest Native Americans. I'm a student at OSU. I've been going to OSU for a couple of years now, OSU being Oregon State University. I'm taking online classes. My major is in agricultural sciences and natural resources with a focus on horticulture and ecological restoration. Okay, we're going to get started. This discussion board had to do with dams because we were focusing on dams and their impact on salmon populations to the indigenous communities in North America with a focus on the Klamath dams because that has been in the news most recently as the biggest dam removal project in North America. And it's really controversial and there's a huge history behind it and I've done other videos on it. So please be sure to watch those so that you can keep up with this video. So I was pro dam removal for this discussion and you can see all those reasons why. Some of them will be clear in this video, but please watch the other video to have a better understanding. Her question for me was, have there been any successful examples of alternative methods or technologies that effectively facilitate salmon migration past post dams, post dams. So I haven't come across any technologies that have been successfully verified to benefit salmon, though that doesn't mean that they don't exist, but it's not just about the salmon, right? The entire ecosystem is impacted by the introduction of dams, but in respect to salmon, what we have to remember is that it's unnatural for salmon to go through a machine. Technologies of this sort retard salmon growth as thousands of years of evolution in their natural environment gave them the qualities that they are so valued for. The population of salmon and the average salmon size has taken a cut due to the introduction of dams and hatcheries, which retard their growth. Current dam infrastructure is a symbol of man's desire to control and in improve nature in their eyes, but why fix something that wasn't broken to begin with? They thought that they were being more efficient, but didn't realize they were weakening valuable essential resources. They lacked foresight and an understanding of ecology. So no, I haven't seen any technologies that can benefit salmon with no negative side effects to salmon and other parts of the ecosystem. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm not saying that they can't exist, but you know, why fix something that wasn't broken? So her next question for me was, how can we balance the needs of farmers who rely on dam water with the ecological necessity of restoring natural river systems? I really don't wanna go over the long history of dams in this video, but generally the federal government stole land from Native Americans and then gave them to farmers with the promise that these farmers can have this bountiful and abundant life with these free resources. And of course that got handed down generation by generation. And now we're here to the present and we're experiencing resource shortages for a lot of reasons and dams are definitely one of them and that's what we're focusing on. So, so now you understand why this can be kind of controversial um, because many farmers are on stolen land and they came without invitation. So all the resources they take from the land is essentially stolen property. But once we acknowledge that, we can start moving forward and see solutions. Once we see the problems, we can see the solutions. So why are we experiencing resource shortages focusing on water? Shortages are happening due to historical and present-day prohibition of indigenous stewardship, exploitation of the land from big industries, including improper practices of modern agriculture and logging, dam infrastructure, and other climate change factors related to human interference. There's a lot of reasons upstream that can be seen downstream, so to speak. If we want to see improvements in the stream, we need to look at all the problems. So to put it bluntly, we need a huge change in our agricultural systems. We need to prioritize small farms and kick out big ag and other industries that pose a threat to the land. We need better land stewardship. We need to stop clear cutting and stop logging near watersheds, practice restoration land management, and bring back cultural burns where they're needed. Additionally, farmers need to develop healthier relationships with tribes who had claims to those resources first. It is after we address the problems in significant ways that we can see significant progress. What we all need to keep in mind is what's in the best interest for the world and not just what's in the best interest for one community or one family. Because the truth is we're all here now and now we have to learn how to cooperate and live together. But racism, colonialism, and white privilege, settler privilege is still present in our communities. And a lot of non-natives have this energy that they think that they should have priority. 
So I just want the viewer to keep that in the back of your mind as I continue. Because we live in a society that has conflicting priorities. There are people who really are concerned with the sustainability and future of our world and they're educated enough to have the foresight to see where we're headed and how to stop it. And then there's a conflict, a dividing line where there's people on the other side that care more about money than life. So we need to decide as communities, as a nation, if money is more important than life, because if we don't take the right action, these watersheds will disappear and then nobody will have water. The lands can only provide so much. We need to focus on restoring watersheds. And to do that, we need to address the industries that are preventing these watersheds from providing the most that they can. The two biggest being the logging industry and unsustainable agriculture. That's monoculture, animal ag, and big ag. Uh, big ag operations. In Oregon, water is being prioritized to big agricultural operations, which is one of the most harmful industries to our world that is negatively impacting us all. It's a huge undertaking, but if we want a sustainable future, these industries need to be addressed before our system, which is dependent on them, fails and ruins everything. Nature is life. Nature provides for us, and if we don't take care of nature, how is everyone gonna get clean water if you destroy all the watersheds that are being protected by the forests? How will we ever be able to enjoy a breath of fresh air when you cut down all the air filters? Forests do so much for us if only people knew. So you know a little bit about the history of dams, but did you know that a lot of farmers rely on water that is directed by dams? Not all of them, but many agricultural operations could not function without it. Small farmers are the backbone of our society and we need to make sure that they have what they need so that they can provide for the people. However, in many places across the nation, we're having water shortages. And a lot of these farmers, they were dependent on these dams for water, so now they're left without water. This is what you have to understand. Dams do not create more water. They draw it from other locations, other stream banks, other lakes, other reservoirs, and then they direct it to where we want it to go. While doing that, they can dry up the other watersheds that they're taking it from other communities that they're taking it from, other ecosystems that they're taking it from, ecosystems and communities that depended on that water, which means that those ecosystems are being changed. The temperature in those areas are changing. The consistency of the, of the soil, of the flora-fauna relationship, it's, it's all changing because of that. And of course, it's not affecting those who are benefiting from that. It takes hundreds or thousands of years for ecosystems to develop ecosystem resilience. And when you disrupt that all in a generation, that's not easy to restore. So what's happening with these huge dam infrastructures is that they're not sustainable. They keep stealing water from other places and those places are not able to replenish themselves. Things are just going to fall apart. Farmers are expecting more and more and more water. They're not getting it. It's not sustainable. Climate changes, water shortages, food shortages. The time to adapt to change is now. Don't wait for things to go back to normal. Take direct action and act sustainably. Don't assume resources will always be there. Those who cling to the past, to what used to be, they're going to feel the hurt the most. We're living in times of great changes and shifts of energy which touch every organism, every atom in our sphere of existence. These changes go beyond the physical, so don't just make changes outside of yourself in your environment. Adapt with mind, body, and spirit. There's a limit to what the land can provide. When there isn't enough water to go around, farmers will need to make important choices that will likely be different across the board. Farmers will need to take into account their individual situation. Can they find a way to invest in creating their own water resources through water harvesting and collection on their land? If not, can they switch their cash crops to ones that don't require as much water? Can they make a switch to regenerative agriculture? Also, are they willing to take on a different career in the meantime and wait until the watershed has been restored? It's not going to be the same solution for every farmer. I value our small organic farmers, uh, not particularly cattle ranchers because like we don't need to have cattle here, they're not native, they cause a lot of problems. Just restore the buffalo and create wildlands areas for game animals. 
And it's also about time that a lot of people consider the health risks of red meat. But I'm not here to judge the farmers if it could be any better than it is now. I just want to see big agriculture out of the picture because it's not sustainable, it's hoarding our resources and it's exporting it elsewhere. I honestly think the federal government should reimburse farmers, all farmers, for present and future losses as a start. After all, it's their fault that they stole land from other communities and then gave it to somebody else with this promise that they'll always have it. Our government sucks. But the cruel reality is, is that things change in society. The markets change, environmental and economic structures change, and it's imperative that we adapt to that change. And of course, if our agricultural system was more sustainable, it would be so much easier to adapt to changes. I don't have a one-size-fits-all solution for everybody, but what's fair to say is that the system we had before wasn't working and wasn't sustainable. So now it's time to force ourselves to find sustainable solutions because the future of our world depends on it. When it comes to resilience and survivability, we can't wait for somebody to come and save us. Native Americans know that all too well, and they're still here. Barely, because structures like the Kalamath Dams have been a constant upstream battle, something that not a lot of Americans today can really relate to. Okay, so she gave me another question. How can indigenous knowledge and practices be integrated into modern water and land management strategies? So modern water and land management is poorly lacking in sustainable solutions. So just by adopting indigenous knowledge and practices will be a huge improvement. To move forwards, involve indigenous communities in policy making, policy decision making, additionally honor treaty rights and honor water laws already in effect. I saw a video where cattle ranchers here in Oregon let their cattle too close to water sources contaminating them, but it's essentially illegal, however not enforced, contributing to water quality problems. In that video, it was brought up that forests with riparian ecosystems are removed to make room for ranchers. However, this should be illegal on both public and private lands as it threatens the life of the watershed. So hopefully you can see that there's a lot of places that we can improve upon in our communities. Our biggest challenge though will be taking on big business, corporations, industries that have money in exploiting our community resources. Keeping them out of our communities should be a priority, whilst also supporting local small farmers. This will make resilient and sustainable communities that are not dependent on outside profiteers. And for those who didn't know, the Kalamath Dams were privately owned by a power company who didn't see any further financial reasoning for keeping it around, as it wasn't making them profits. So yeah, we do live in a world where people value money over life but you don't have to be that kind of person. So large dam infrastructure is not the only things that are ruining our ecosystems. We also have oil mining. So I'm gonna like shift over to that and go into a different discussion. So now we're gonna be moving on to Alaska. In this discussion board, we were talking about the negative impacts of oil mining in Alaska to the ecosystems that native communities depended on, like the migration of elk herds and of course, clean drinking water. One of the greatest weaknesses of our society is our dependence on fossil fuels and other unsustainable resources, which threatens the relationship that we have with nature, which directly impacts our ability to provide for the people's basic needs. Nature doesn't have a price tag, but money and power influences the hearts and minds of men, sucking them into the habits of harm and destruction. So we the people have become so dependent and addicted to power and electricity, which is something that's neutral. It doesn't have to harm the environment. However, capitalist profiteers will do anything to cut corners and keep their profits flowing because money is more important to them than life itself. This makes it difficult to address social justice issues such as injustice towards the First Nation people because there are so many people that don't want to give up their conveniences. Additionally, in some cases, electricity is keeping their loved ones alive, keeping food and water available, keeping houses warm in the winter. But guess what? We are an innovative and capable species. We can come up with sustainable solutions, but we can't do it with big money industries holding all the cards. Until we unite and come together and push for sustainable solutions, we are fighting a losing battle. The best way to fight capitalist profiteering is to outcompete them with sustainable initiatives. 
And yes, that is quite challenging when such industries buy up new inventions and shelf them. You may hear such and such corporation experimenting with new technologies that are sustainable, but it's never come through because anything that's truly sustainable will not make a capitalist money. They will need to design something in a way that allows it to break down after a while so that it can be replaced to keep the money flowing into their pockets. As I have immersed myself in discussions of Native American injustice, I notice a lot of modern and non-native farmers will complain that they don't get enough pieces of the pie because their cognitive dissonance in the matter of their own involvement in the dwindling resources of our communities impedes their vision. Likewise, when you tell a lot of farmers that Native Americans had rights to these resources first, they literally argue that you're being racist. Ultimately, they complain that farmers need resources, their houses need power, and yet most Native communities are poor, many without access to clean running water or food availability. The United States is not built on equality. It is built on the graves of an oppressed people, by the hands of oppressed people. These resources that farmers complain they can't get enough of is an insult to injury to the people that it has been stolen from. With more insight, we can see that small farmers are not the enemy. It's big agriculture. It's the loggers who clear cut. It's the dams and the oil industries that are all doing the heaviest damage and it affects everyone. And we're all guilty of supporting one thing or another, but until we work together to find sustainable solutions, they will bring their guns and their armed squads and they will forcefully take what they want. And people that use these resources are funding that oppression. And by acknowledging the part that we play in this, we can also acknowledge that we have the power to change things. We need to wean ourselves off unsustainable resources like fossil fuels, like timber, and factory farmed animal products. I hope this has given you something to think about. I want you to all remember that we are all capable of positive change. We have to unite and take back our power to become resilient communities. The less dependent we are on a broken system, the better off we'll be when the tower falls and the kingdom comes. Know whose land you're on, know the dark history of the nation you're in, be a team player. There's no reason why we can't all benefit human and nature. Profiteering industries are not people or nature, so they don't count. If you had the power to manifest one solution that would make your community more resilient overnight, what would it be? Thanks for listening. Live long and prosper.